This is full tackle. If anything is wrong with you, do not do this. You really have to be physically very strong in order to go through 80 minutes of getting down on the ground and back up again. Yes, there, there are aspects of it that may make it seem like a savage sport, but it, it's not. There's finesse, there's technique. I think a lot of times like women are so underestimated in the sports, especially high contact sports, that we can't handle it. <sighs> that is absolutely untrue. We're doing full tackle, we're doing the same exact thing that men are doing, and we're playing it at the same level, and we're kicking butt at it. We should be like raised up and celebrating women for like taking this huge chance to do this. Huge stigma against women in contact sports like this. Like you're too gentle, too fragile. Like you're a precious flower. You can't play rugby. It makes me feel empowered, and I feel like other people should feel the same way when they play rugby. Women are extremely underrepresented in, in the concussion field. Over the last 15 years, we've learned a lot about what causes concussion in football players. Uh, but that's only a small proportion of the population. Um, boys and girls play sports and there's a lot of evidence suggesting that there's different tolerances between boys and girls. So for every match sport, girls have a higher incidence of concussion than boys. Um, but we don't really understand why and what those differences are, so we have a study designed to measure head impacts in male and female rugby players to identify those differences. Um, at the end of this, it would be really awesome if we could build a model to predict women's concussion risk instead of just um, what we currently have, which is for men's football players, which is, is really awesome that we have that, but kind of expanding our risk functions so that we have something that's more useful for, for more of the population, especially because there's so many women athletes. I think it's really important that they're represented in this type of research as well. And it may be that, that female athletes are just better at reporting the guys. Testosterone versus estrogen, does that play a role? Uh, proportionally, women's heads are just as big as men's heads with respect to the rest of the body but smaller neck, smaller shoulder girdle, so less musculature there. There was a certain play where I was running forward and some girl grabbed the back of my jersey and she swung me around. So I like went to my knees and like slammed my head on her knees. There was in one hit that was what did it to me. It was just like a combination of the entire game and the, the intensity of it. And then after the game, I was just, I was very out of it. Most people that suffer concussion are not knocked out. They retain consciousness, but they're obviously confused, a little bit dazed. Oftentimes, they're coming up with kind of a word salad. For a while, it was just hard to concentrate. I was overly emotional. Light was too much. Noise was too much. Irritability, emotional. I was constantly fatigued. I really like got a headache if I looked at my computer screen. And it just stinks because like your energy level is at just an all-time low. And, and like, when you try to exercise again, like I found for me, like when I started a little bit too early, like I would get dizzy doing like simple motions. Running back and forth gave me like pounding headache. I felt like pressure in my head really is very rarely a structural problem with the brain. This is really a functional disturbance. The brain cells aren't talking to each other properly as a result of this injury. So getting a CAT scan typically is not helpful unless there's progressive neurologic deterioration. So if symptoms are getting worse, then of course you're going to want to get a CAT scan because you're worried about a bleed in the brain. You getting behind in school already creates an anxious feeling in addition to a concussion causing those feelings. And like feeling behind and feeling like also like stepping out of rugby for three weeks is like, am I gonna be forgotten? Like, am I, is someone gonna replace me? Like that's the thing is, because you can't speed up your recovery, it just gives you so much anxiety because you're like, I just wanna be better already. Because it's, it's hard to stop playing a sport that you're so passionate about and that you love. And it's just like, it's the worst thing to have an injury that'll take you out for that long. We used to really emphasize kind of the rest portion of things. And most of the recent research has indicated that while you do want to give a day or two off for the symptoms to improve, you don't necessarily now wait for people to be totally asymptomatic before you start exercising them again. So that's, I think, another kind of a big breakthrough is we now know that you should be exercising at a low level very early on, and people that do that tend to recover better. So we're in the Helmet Lab, which is in one of the buildings that ICTAS manages, uh, right in the center of engineering and the center of Virginia Tech. ICTAS is the Institute for Critical Technology and Applied Science. 
we got into this uh, testing game way before concussion was very popular, way back in 2003. In fact, it seemed like almost nobody cared. Uh, Dr. Duma and I were sort of banging the drum about, hey, we'd like to study this, and everybody said, nah, I don't think you need to do that. It's not really a big deal. So in 2003, we are the first team in the world to instrument their football players and collect real-time acceleration data. All that data provided the foundation for what later became the helmet ratings and now what is ubiquitous in the helmet world in terms of high-performance helmets, whether it's football, hockey, bicycling, soccer. It all started in 2003 and now it's really blossomed. And then around 2011 we started instrumenting youth football teams and now we continue to do that with one of our big NIH projects to look at how the kids play the sports. But once we were able to put data with it, we could advise leagues like Pop Warner on how to change practice structures and change how much the kids are getting hit. They implemented those changes and it made a big difference. So kids that had 300 head impacts in one season with the rule changes based on the data we collected, that went from 300 to 150. So it cut the head impacts in half. That's kind of been the holy grail here. Uh, for us over the past few years is to try to develop that technology that's going to allow us to measure those head accelerations in non-helmeted sports, which in particular are related primarily to women because there are not very many helmeted sports that women play. So we're using head impact sensors. We take custom dentitions of each player and mold mouth guards. So during the game, all of the impacts are stored locally on this device, and then after the game, I'm able to download all the data off of the device. The sensors measure our linear acceleration and rotational velocity. Um, these are correlates to brain strain. Obviously, something with a higher magnitude and a longer duration would be um, more detrimental to the athlete's brain health. So those are kind of the things we're monitoring, um, as well as frequency of head impact um, over the course of, of a game or of a whole season. We pair that information with clinical data so we can create models to characterize risk and see how that differs between males and females. This will be a multi-year study and at the end of it we hope to identify what those differences are. How much force does it take to cause a concussion in a girl versus a boy? And We want to make sure that the sensors that we're using in our study are validated and work appropriately. So we'll test it under different conditions to make sure that the impacts that it would, was designed to measure are being measured. Three, two, one. Two, one. The men and the women's club um, rugby teams at Tech, I'm asking them for a pretty big commitment. It's a whole season's worth of data collection. At each practice and game, I bring all of the mouth guards um, the athletes wear them and then I video all the practices and games and we validate the data with the video. That also allows us to characterize the head impacts that we see. So were they hitting the ground, were they hitting another player? Uh, my athletes also do weekly symptom surveys to see if their symptoms change. So they might not have had one specific incident uh, or one impact that was concussive, but kind of the accumulation of head impacts over the course of a game or a season. We're interested to know how that affects the players as well. We're also looking at gait and seeing if gait changes over the course of uh, a semester of head impacts or after a concussion. Um, so between the clinical measures of that and the symptoms and the biomechanics of the head impacts, that's enough for me <laughs> to, to kind of try to figure out for now. It's exciting. I mean, it's a great program. We've got a great group here. A lot of faculty, a lot of students, a lot of staff really contribute. And it makes a big, big impact. It's always great to see your research being used to make sports safer. And I know our group finds it particularly rewarding to see people use it, make informed decisions, and it's really defining the future of sport. And it's important for athletes everywhere, not even in just rugby. We might get the most contact, so we'll be the best guinea pigs for this sort of study. But I, honestly, uh, it's, it's really important. And we're happy that something, especially a woman of research, especially within this position, within this realm, it's super cool to just be supporting that in all of what we're doing. The Virginia Tech Helmet Lab is also involved in a study by the National Institutes of Health on youth football, providing the first biomechanical data describing concussions in kids, which could improve youth helmet design. The Helmet Lab has rated headgear and helmets for varsity and youth football, flag football, hockey, cycling, soccer, and soon baseball and softball.